This channel is mostly dedicated to modern fencing as it appears in media, so there are a lot of things that I've always stayed away from. Basically any bout that is shown with real swords, so like stuff from Pirates of the Caribbean or something like that. One of those things includes Star Wars. However, this week is going to be a bit of an exception to that. About two weeks ago, a video started to appear in the fencing subreddit about this guy on TikTok who was showcasing this move that is done in one of the Star Wars movies, specifically Anakin vs. Obi-Wan Kenobi, and try to explain how something that looked like a bunch of useless spinning was actually a real fencing technique. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at his analysis. This ought to be good. This is an extended scene where there's just two characters spinning their lightsabers for no reason. Okay, okay, okay. Great video, love it, great points, but I want to talk about this scene from Revenge of the Sith because it's actually really fucking awesome. A lot of people make fun of this part of the duel because it's just them swinging their swords back and forth, but it's actually a real fencing technique called circle parry. A circle parry is where a fencer will move their blade around their opponent's blade to try to avoid their attack. Okay, right off the bat he got something wrong. A circle parry is not trying to avoid your opponent's blade. Technically that is something called a disengage. A disengage is something where you attack into one line, you wait for your opponent to fall for it, and then you circle around underneath, or over, depending on what parry it is, and establish the same line, or sometimes a different line, and then continue the attack. Basically you're baiting them into doing one parry so that you can get around it and then complete the attack. It's also known as a feint, which I think is a more recognizable term, but the English term is disengage. The thing is, that's when you're attacking, not when you're defending. So already his analysis is... It, he's using the wrong term, so I already don't think he really knows what he's talking about. Now, what makes this scene in particular awesome is that Obi-Wan begins to attempt a circle parry around Anakin's blade, but Anakin realizes what Obi-Wan is doing, so he engages in a counter circle parry, which is where you parry around a parrying blade. And it's basically a game of chicken. Who's going to be the first one to stop the motion and attempt an attack? So he's saying that one starts to try to counter it by also doing a circle. Except he's saying that both of them are parrying. That doesn't make sense. If two people are parrying, it means they're both defending themselves. But if both of them are defending themselves, then one or both of them is an idiot because why do you need to defend yourself if no one's attacking? He's saying that both of them are defending, which means that neither of them are attacking. So why do you have to defend? I've never seen a bout, even amongst beginners, where one person is parrying and then the other person is parrying as well. That just doesn't happen. If you're parrying, you're essentially pulling your blade back to yourself. And that's something that even beginners only get the instinct to do when they're being attacked. So, of course, it's also something that is relevant in fencing in any level of experience. If one person is attacking, the other person is parrying. One is on defense, and the other is on attack. You can't have both people on defense, because then, you know, I mean, technically two people physically could pull their blades back and parry at the same time, except they're not parrying anything. They're just doing the wrong action. I don't know. I think this guy has seen too many movies. He's kind of, he's, He's using the wrong terms, and he... Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna call it he doesn't know what he's talking about at all. And it's also thematically awesome because real fencers typically only do this when they know the other fighter extremely well. And then that last comment, they only do this if the two fighters, or in this case fencers, know each other extremely well. That does not apply. So the thing is, I think what he was trying to say is that this sort of spinning thing that people bring up can be applied to actual fencing technique by a disengage and then a circle parry to that. 
because a circle parry is an actual thing. I've heard it described as two ways, sort of, by two slightly different techniques that sort of fall under the same term. Although I've spoken with people about this, and apparently they only recognized one of them, so I'm going to go over both. The circle parry that I think is more universally recognized technique amongst fencers is when someone actually does do a disengage, but you're able to see it in time, you then perform a circle parry by then circling around their blade after they've established the actual attack so that you can so that your blade still ends up on the inside of theirs and you can push it away. Basically, repositioning your blade so that your parry is still successful. This is rather uncommon nowadays because fencing has significantly speeded up from back when modern fencing and classical fencing were the same thing. They were done a lot slower, so this sort of technique was a lot more relevant back then. But if an opponent messes up and does a disengage improperly, then you can certainly do it. The other explanation for a circle parry that I've also heard, when an opponent is attacking and either due to their position or how they fenced leading up to that touch, then you're not certain what line that they're going to attack in, so you, you know, you're at too much of a risk of establishing the wrong parry and then not being able to recover in time. If that is the case, then another kind of circle parry is where you start your blade at the bottom and you basically do a giant circle, like a giant sweep across your entire body, all the way around from the bottom up to the side and ending up essentially in the six. So it's a sweeping circle motion that quickly covers all parry lines. It is useful if you're not sure where your opponent is coming from. The downside is it's easier to see and it's slower to execute which gives your opponent more time. And even if they don't, it is possible, and I can speak from personal experience, if you don't do it quickly enough, then even if you do catch their blade, a lot of times their remise will still push through before you've managed to get their blade outside of your body line, and you know it doesn't matter if they didn't see it coming, they still hit because they did it in time. Those are the two things that a circle parry is. So what he's talking about is not circle parry versus circle parry. That's what he's saying, but that doesn't what he means. What he means is a disengage versus a circle parry. And technically, if two fencers are doing that and one disengages, the other realizes that it's a disengage and goes for a circle parry to still try to capture it, and then the person doing the disengage realizes that they're about to be captured and they try to do another disengage, then technically this kind of thing can happen. And you could make the argument that that kind of thing could happen even at this speed because they're Jedi. So I guess I'm not a Jedi expert, but apparently Force users, so in this case Jedi, are able to have some precognition. So the Force is sort of able to allow them to think ahead a lot more than most people because they can actually see that kind of thing. But that's all lore stuff. The thing is, that doesn't really work with what we're seeing here because a disengage versus a circle parry, that is a thrusting attack against a circular defense. They're not thrusting. They are cutting. They are using their entire blades and essentially swinging. But the point is, a disengage only really works if you're doing a thrusting attack, which none of them are doing. They're also far too close for it. This is sort of like an infighting thing, so you could still make the argument that they're trying to avoid each other's blades, and because they're Jedi that they can, you know, see 10 or 12 steps into the future or whatever. But still, it... I. That's not enough for me to really think that this is anything close to a modern fencing technique, and certainly not what he's talking about. First of all, like I said previously, he said circle parry versus circle parry, which doesn't make sense. If he said it correctly, a disengage versus a circle parry, that still doesn't, that's still not something that would happen in this particular 
you know, just how they're positioned. They're too close to each other. They're, one of them is not attacking by thrusting. In fact, they're not even attacking at all. They just start spinning before they attack. And also, no circle parry goes behind the back. It just doesn't really make sense. But the last comment that I wanted to get to was what he said at the very end. Fencers only do it. They're extremely familiar with each other. That's bullshit. It's not true whatsoever. Usually a circle parry is some sort of second intention or if you're doing it the second way that I mentioned, more of a desperate bid because you're not sure exactly where they're going to end up, then you may even be more likely to do it against someone that you're not sure what they're doing. If you're doing a circle parry against a disengage, so it's smaller and more accurate, that's still something that, you know, Honestly, you could do against someone that you have never fenced before, especially if you're doing it in a longer bout and this is in like the second half of the bout. I can tell you for certain, any competent fencer only needs that much time to really start to pick up those sort of, you know, tiny signals that they need to see in order to see this kind of thing coming and then actually perform that move if it's needed. So you don't have to be extremely familiar with your opponent. In fact, I think if you were that familiar with someone, then you would avoid getting into this spinning rabbit hole in the first place. Because you know that, you know, it's not going to lead anywhere. And in fact, this sort of spinning stuff, I've seen something like it happen maybe once or twice. And the thing is, it never lasts this long. Because by the time the fencer realizes that it's not working, one or both will very quickly go and do something else. They will back out or they will go the other way to try to capture. They'll do something to switch things up. And I think even if you make the argument that, you know, Jedi should have seen this, you know, Jedi can look into the future, whatever the explanation is, that would even, that would lend itself more credence to this argument because they can see for more certain than someone who isn't a force user that this isn't going anywhere. So there's no reason for them to keep going. I think what happened is a dude saw this and he couldn't accept the fact that it is just useless spinning and decided to look up fencing terms and try to apply them. It's very clear he doesn't know what he's doing. It's very clear that... Um, he just Googled something and has probably never seen it in action. Because the thing is, even if he did use all the proper terms, disengages and circle parries do not look like this. So it doesn't matter if what they're doing is legitimate in terms of how Jedi fight, because, you know, that's obviously very different from how fencers do it. The core of the argument is that it is not anything close to an actual fencing technique, whether historical, modern, or classical. It just doesn't happen. So, that's the end of that. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next week. Bye.